But we're studying bite force and skull mechanics in lizards so we can better understand why lizards have the certain shape skull that they do. And this helps us explain the diversity of skull shapes that are found in this very specious group. So we studied the South American black and white tegu lizard, which is a very charismatic animal but has a broad diet and has this really interesting skull and these interesting teeth and it's an animal that we can get bite force from to compare to our results. So what we did is CT scanned the skull and made a computer model and then used sophisticated engineering software to analyze how stress and strain was distributed in that skull. And this technique can be applied to animals that are extinct or rare and endangered because of its non-invasive aspect. So this same approach has already been used for dinosaurs and hominids that tell us something about the evolution of, of human beings and also uh, extinct mammals. So the way we use our bones can affect their shape and how robust they are. And tennis players tend to have bones in, in their tennis playing arm that are 10% thicker than in their non-tennis playing arm. So some of our research has been picked up by medical journals because we've shown that the soft tissue structures that connect the bones together are important for spreading the loading from biting around the skull evenly. And this tells us something perhaps about conditions that are found in humans where these soft tissue structures close up early and are associated with abnormal growth. Australia is home to a very diverse array of lizards, so it'd be great to apply these methods to those animals to see if that diversity is associated with the way stresses and strains are distributed around the skull related to feeding.